Hello friends, welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown, your friend and neighbor. Saying hello to all of my friends and neighbors. I hope you're well, I hope you had a great week. I have returned from Ottawa. I am back in my lovely home of Toronto. And uh, I'm moving on to a new topic. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about everyone's favorite scale, the pentatonic. Now I know there's a ton of videos all over the internet, all over the YouTubes, talking about pentatonics and the modes of the pentatonic scale and, and all the stuff that you can do with pentatonics. Uh, and that's all great. I suggest that you check those out whenever you get a chance. But um, what I'm going to show you today is something that I haven't seen uh, in any other lessons. And it's going to be a different way and a very simple way, I think, of really connecting the entire range of the fingerboard through a very simple sort of means. Um, again, I haven't seen this, so stop me if you've heard this before. But I think this is going to be good. So in this, we'll be covering you know, the basics of pentatonics, and I'm just going to show you a couple of shapes that will really help you to connect the fingerboard. And then in the coming weeks, we'll get into some different exercises and different applications for the pentatonic scale. So this will be kind of the beginner's lesson for pentatonics. But it's also going to be a lesson uh, that anyone can really use because, again, a little bit of a different method than I'm going to be uh, talking about here. All right, let's dive in. I'm going to start with um, the minor pentatonic scale. Now in previous lessons uh, I centered a few exercises around the G minor pentatonic scale. So you know what? I'm going to stay there. I'm going to stay with G minor pentatonic uh, and then move on from there. So check this out. G minor pentatonic, if you don't know the scale, it is very simple. I've got the low G, I always forget to turn up the bass when I start to play. Turn it up, hear that? Bass, okay. So here's G, there's my minor third, B flat, C to D, F, there's my root again, G, and I can continue to B flat and C. So it's very simple, I've got on the E string, uh, third fret, to 6th fret, and then on every other string, it's 3rd fret to 5th fret. Very simple. So, you know, as we did in uh, the triads video, I had a couple of different ways to play the triad. And I'm going to use that same sort of methodology to show you a couple of different ways to play the minor pentatonic scale. This is going to come in very, very, very handy for a couple of reasons. So I'll show you. If you remember what was going on with the triads, we had root, minor third, and the fifth. So that was putting the root and the minor third on the same string, which gives us this little four fret span. We also had the other formation of the minor triad, where we put the third, the minor third, and the fifth on the same string, which gives us G, B flat at the first fret of the A string, and then that D on the same string, fifth fret of the, the A string. So we can also change slightly the form of the pentatonic scale by using this other shape of the triad. So if I move that B flat from the sixth fret of the E, to the first fret of the A, I get a, a slightly different formation of the pentatonic scale. So here I have G, B flat, C, D, F, and I can continue on. Cool thing here is I can then access the low F. That becomes my lowest note. If I'm playing a four string, I'm playing a five, but let's just pretend I'm playing a four string. So that my lowest, note, my lowest note of the minor pentatonic scale in this particular case is going to be the note F at the first fret of the E string. If 
right? So there's a different formation of the minor pentatonic. Now, why is this important? I'll tell you why. Because I believe these two shapes have their own very distinct melodic characteristics. This is where we get to have some fun. Now, if I play that first shape that I showed you where we put the root and the third on the same string, there is a very sort of specific sound where all the notes are very precise and, uh, and laid out in this very simple way. So you can see the left hand doesn't have to do a whole lot of work with this particular shape of the minor pentatonic scale. Very easy. So there's a little bit more work involved initially when you look at the other formation because what happens is now with the other formation when I move the B flat I'm putting three notes, the minor third, the fourth, and the fifth all on the same string, all a tone apart. So I have the root, B flat, there's my fourth, the C, D, yeah, D, <laughs> and then the F. Right? So here you can see there's a bit of a stretch happening. It's kind of a huge stretch when you consider having to make that, that leap from the first fret of the A string to the fifth fret of the A string. But this is where things can get super cool. And the real difference between these two formations, because that stretch doesn't have to be a stretch at all. And there's a very simple thing you can do to get by that. And that is simply sliding from the C up to the D when you are ascending the scale. And then when you come back down the scale, slide back from D back to C and then continue the scale from there. I will show you what I mean by that. So with the other formation of the scale, that's the sound. But check this out. When I switch to that, that sort of B flat on the A string, I get So all I did there was I hit C, slide up to the D, continue the scale, and then when I come back, D, slide down to C, B flat, root. So if I just play and then play the other formation, that's so hip. I love that. I love them both, really but for different reasons, right? Very cool sound. So those are the two uh, formations or the two shapes for the G minor pentatonic scale, right? You can just work on those two shapes and really get them under your fingers and, you know, play them at a faster tempo or slower tempo or however you want to practice it. But then there's a couple of other things that, uh, that we should talk about. And one involves something called the relative major. The first mode of a minor pentatonic scale is a major pentatonic scale. In other words, starting a major pentatonic scale on the second note of the minor pentatonic scale gives us the first mode of the minor pentatonic. Now. Why is this important? I'll show you. Because now we can start to use that little bit of information to our advantage. Because if I go to the second note of the G minor pentatonic, that's B flat. So now I have this idea in my head that uh, I have the B flat major pentatonic scale starting on the second note of the minor pentatonic. So what does that sound like? Well, if I think of the major scale, I'm using the root, the second, the third, the fifth, the sixth. There's the octave, and I can continue on if I want to. But that's the scale, right? 
Sunshine on a cloudy day. That simple. Okay, that's enough of that. So, here's the other thing that I want you to understand about this, because this is where things can get super hip. What I said before about starting the major pentatonic scale on the second note of the minor pentatonic scale, here's why that's important. Because if I go back to my minor pentatonic scale and that second formation that puts the B flat on the first fret of the A string, then check this out. Here's the B flat major scale that I just showed you. And now here's the G minor, here's the G minor pentatonic scale starting from the second note on that B flat of the first fret of the A. Right? Root, second, third, fifth, sixth. Now look at that. Let's have a look at that because there's a shape being created here. And I can consider this shape another formation of the major pentatonic scale. Why is that important? I'll show you why. Because if I use that shape on the B flat starting on the E string, there I get to my root. But look, I can play another full octave of that scale. right there. So check it out. My G minor pentatonic scale has a few different formations and those formations can take me from the third fret all the way to the twelfth fret. I'll show you how. I'll start with G minor pentatonic. Then I'll move up to B flat major pentatonic. Then I'll play that same, that other formation, that other shape of the B flat major pentatonic scale, putting the first three notes on the same string. Huh? So check this out G minor pentatonic. B flat major pentatonic starting on the sixth fret of the E string. And then I've also got the two octave B flat major scale starting from the same note, putting the first three notes on the same string. Now, the way that I think about this is uh, essentially one scale. It's just one scale, because I'm really just playing one scale. I'm breaking things down this way so that you can see the individual shapes that make up my one sort of macro scale, which is very hip. So let's first isolate the shapes, and then we'll put them together. So remember, we're going to use this shape of the minor pentatonic scale putting the root note and the minor third on the same string because it's super simple. It's very easy to access all of these notes without having to move. So that'll be our shape for the minor pentatonic. That's G minor pentatonic. Then we'll move up to B flat major pentatonic. So again, just to mark out the shape, I've got the root, second, major third, fifth, sixth. Here's my root, second, or the ninth, and then there's my third. And then the next formation that we that we will use is that two octave pentatonic scale. And then if we want, we can go right back down to the G to resolve that scale.
We don't have to, but we can. If, uh, if you want to make it sound sort of more complete. Choice is yours. So see what's happening here? I've got these three shapes uh, and three different ways to play the same scale. It's really the same scale. That's the beauty of this exercise. So here's what I want you to do. Here's the main exercise that I want you to practice for the next, next week. We're going to play G minor pentatonic ascending. Now from here, I want to slide up to this D at the seventh fret of the G string. And then I want to come down the B flat major pentatonic from there. And then when I get to that B flat at the sixth fret of the E string, I want to play the two octave pattern of the major pentatonic scale from that B flat. So I'll do that again. G minor pentatonic, B flat major pentatonic, B flat major pentatonic, two octave, and that's that. I can come back down, same thing. So I'll come down B flat major pentatonic and then that sort of second finger position of the B flat major pentatonic putting the third and the fifth on the same string. And then I'll slide back to, to C here and then just come down the minor pentatonic scale. So then the full exercise, ascending and descending, is as follows. How cool is that? With those simple shapes, you can cover so much ground playing the same scale. Super hip. Because then, you know, as I was talking about in the last video with the triad inversions, every time you move to a different area of the neck, you have a whole other set of notes and a whole other shape that, again, has its own melodic characteristic. Right? that friends and neighbors uh, listen as I say every single week if you like this video please do click like share it amongst your peoples amongst your friends and neighbors and um, and of course you have the option if you want to you can donate to the channel I will leave all of the the, uh, the necessary links you also have the option to follow me on all of my social media platforms Facebook Twitter Instagram and any other pertinent links that you might also want to follow Listen, I had a great time hanging with y'all today. And I hope this lesson uh, is of some value to you. I hope it helps you on your journey to become the best musician that you can be. And uh, I'm going to leave it there for the week. Practice your pentatonics. My name is Rich Brown. Thanks for visiting me in the Brownstone once again. Peace and love, my friends and neighbors. I will see you in the next video.